It's the opening weekend of the 2024 Shinty League season. The Strathclass Shinty team face a daunting trip to the Aelin in Newton Moor. Newton Moor have dominated North Division 1 for the last few years. A challenging mix of strong reserve sides and clubs such as Glengarry, Lachcarran and Inverness means it will not be easy for Strathclass to bounce back to the National Division at the first time of asking. The day starts overcast but clement and the sun starts to come out as the Strath team warm up. Referee Andrew Grant McKenzie gets the 2024 season underway. Henry Jones puts the club into an early lead. Penny makes it 2 0. Ten minutes later, before Jacob Bain responds for Newton Moore. Second half starts off with Newton Moore desperately searching for an equaliser. Both sides show no quarter in what is sure to be a crucial game for their title chances. Until the last few moments of the game, that Penry Jones seals the victory. Yeah, uh, good to win. I mean, we made it tough, but we won. I think that was the most important thing. First uh, game of the season, get a win. Um, got there in the end. The man, uh, we probably should have dealt with it a wee bit better, but yeah, we got through it. Uh, our training's been going really well, um, and then a few wins on top of that. Pre-season was good, but then to get the first win of the season, I think that's going to pick everyone up. A fine start to the season against challenging opponents. However, the next week, the Firsts have to rely on a last-minute Rudy Todd goal to salvage a point at home against Fort William. Next up, local rivals Bewley at Brayview Park. The Straff starts strongly, but in what will be a common theme, Bewley goalkeeper Kyle McDonald is sharp enough keep oh, the Carrick men at bay. The Straff have a few early flurries, but strokes. can't hit the target. The Straff's profligacy up front is punished when veteran John Stewart gets a sight of goals. 1 0. Adam Todd keeps Bewley from doubling their lead. Then a sore one for rolling midfielder Lewis Douglas. Louis tries to battle on, but he's soon replaced by player coach Donald Fraser. The Strath have taken a strong travelling support but they're growing increasingly restless as the first half drags on. The wearing of helmets is fairly prevalent in modern Jinty. Penry Jones is certainly happy to be wearing his one. Don't 
Donald Fraser starts becoming more influential, but McDonald is inspired between the sticks. The management team switch it up with Josh Fraser into the forward line. And just before half time, Penny Jones drags the strath level. The strath push hard to see if they can go into the half time break 2 1 up. Vice Captain Rudy Strachan isn't far away from breaking his league duck. The referee blows for half time as the Straff head to the changing rooms to talk about how to get ahead in the second half. Straff start the second half, playing against the wind. <laughs> Veteran Robbie Stokes is enjoying the benefits of increased training, but he still can't hit the target. The sidelines, Darren Reed and Robert Geddes pace nervously. Their concerns about their team's profligacy are well merited. Sean Stewart against another play makes it 2 1. Really push on to try and make it 3 1. Strath's undefeated run is hanging by a thread. The Strath weather the storm, however, and re establish their grip on the game. Yet, an equaliser is not forthcoming. Inspired by a stonewall performance at the back from Kyle McDonald between the sticks and fullback Sandy Tullach, Bewey desperately defend their weight. Two minutes left in regulation time, Josh Fraser makes up a moment of magic. Straff push hard in the dying moments. Steven Scuba Hislop goes agonisingly close. That's the final action of the game though. And Straff have to be content with salvaging a point. Donald Fraser and the rest of the coaching team gather the players in the middle of the park. Hard win it, but I think it's as much fun in the head as it is in anything else. Uh, I think that 90% of it is once you think that you're tired, you think that it's not going to win. Okay, but it's still undefeated, that's the positive. Yeah. Okay, we had so many chances, we've got to finish it. Several of us, we could have won that, we've been outside. So we need to finish it. Great, the chances, that's real positive. You know, coming back again, we on the game to get through. It's great. We had another two minutes on the park with the one that game. We stuck together, lads, okay? Yeah.
The result leaves Strakwas fifth in the table, but still undefeated. Next up, Sky Kamenacht at home in Cannes. Lawrence Jones moved to Cannes as a young boy from England. He took to Shinti like a duck to water and grew up to become an enthusiastic, skillful and athletic player, key to the hopes of the Strath. Lawrence recovered from serious injury to become the club's player of the year in 2017. Always ready with a cheeky smile and a quip, Lawrence was a beloved figure in the club, in the wider community and far beyond. After an injury hit 2018, Lawrence returned the following season, seemingly back to his best and raring to go. It's half past four in the morning on Sunday, 17th of March 2024. When players, volunteers, and supporters of Strachlas Shinti Club are gathering at Cannock Hall to begin in Solace Moor, the big light, a walk in memory of Jones. Oh, come on, right? Concerning when you put up a picture of me and you, saying how good the fertility is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one drink. We'll still drink it. <laughs> right. The walkers of all ages head out on the route, taking them past Comer and Kero, towards Fasnakail. Over 40 people have joined this year's walk, which symbolises walking through darkness into the light. However, the community recently suffered another day of a young person to suicide. So raising awareness of this pressing issue, as well as the opportunity to remember Lawrence, is very much on everyone's mind. Just a walk around the loop. Or it's been a few different places over the years, but I walk early in the morning, uh, see the sunrise. I think this is the fifth year we've been doing it now, I've been told. Um, aye, it's enjoyable. Sighting a bit different. Uh, I mean, you have to put a fair bit of effort into getting up early in the morning, but yeah. Well, this has certainly become the thing that we do do every year, uh, about the same time, and it seems to, seems to stick and it, suit, it suits us now, I think. The Vasnikail Bridge marks the halfway point of Unsolus Mode. The walkers take a little moment to sit, chat, and rest. <laughs> and as the sky begins to brighten, the walkers turn for home. It's really important um, having some recognition for um, something that's not easy to talk about um, always and um, bringing everyone together. In the final stretch home, the walkers pass posters of support made by the young pupils of Carrick Bridge Primary School. Today, the club launches Straff Strong, the guide to supporting the mental health and well-being of young people. So just, uh, we're launching mental health because, as you know, because of Lawrence, but also 
there's been another death in the community as well. So we decided that everybody needs help. And the mental health policy we've decided to go with, with Mikey's line is that not just one person shoulders it, it's to try and everybody should look after everybody and keep a, keep a, keep a check on each other and chat it through. Finishes where it began at the Shinty Pitch, where one has played for so many years. His friends and family make their way across the park to where some of his ashes are spread and two apple trees have been planted as the sun peaks over Kero Bray. After a short moment of contemplation, it's back to the Bog Cotton Cafe owned by Lawrence's father Matt for a much needed cup of coffee and some bacon rolls. On and off the park, Lawrence is greatly missed by those who loved him. For anyone struggling, you are not alone.